<laughs> we now call this meeting to order. If you could please pay attention to Council Member Emerson for the invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you're able. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Tonight, I would like to introduce Jonathan Sublette, who moved here from Houston, Texas, with his wife, Tricia, and his three kids, Claudette, Silas, and Tobias, who are accompanying him to the podium tonight for the prayer. Jonathan is the lead pastor of, of my church, Fellowship High Crest, and he's also chairman of the board for St. Topeka. So. Maybe we we'll pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for these humble servants who um, have chosen to say yes in leading, and, and, and leadership is hard. We thank you, Father, for uh, the city that we're able to live in and the protection we have and the public servants we have that protect us and serve and put their lives at risk. We're thankful for people who are willing to come together and talk about hard issues, even when it's uncomfortable. We're thankful, Father, for being able to enjoy um, pleasures and, and um, luxuries like uh, public water and all the utilities that we're having. We thank you, Father, for, for rules of our head and, and, and all the ways that you provide for us on a daily basis. We ask, Father, that um, you would be in this time, that it would be reflective of the character of your son, Jesus Christ, and what he showed as he walked this earth. We ask that there will be a, a spirit of unity, one of uh, mutual upbuilding, one that seeks um, to see the best in each person that is represented, one that sees the dignity that is bestowed upon each person because we're made in your image. Okay. We ask, Father, that um, you would just allow us to be forgiven for any um, misplaced attitudes or uh, criticalness of spirit that we may have as, as discussions happen. We ask that if, if we have offended our brothers or sisters in the past, that they would forgive us of those things. And we just yield this time to you that it would be productive, that our future generations would, would um, benefit from this time, that our communities would benefit from this time, that other cities would see what happens here in these chambers and use it as an example of what could be possible when a group of people have mutual purpose and move toward one goal. So we thank you for this time. We ask that you would bless all that happens and that a, a spirit of togetherness and hope and joy and peace would rule over everything that happens tonight. We pray these things in the darkness Son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. So for those of you that have not had the pleasure of meeting Pastor Sublette, I will tell you that going to the church, which I, tip, I go to fellowship, but the times that I've been at uh, Fellowship Highcrest, it is hopping. This man has the heart of Christ. For those of you that kind of saw us giggling while the cameras were on, we were giggling because the kiddos were talking and there was a huge amen from one of the kids when we said amen in the meeting. Um, we are very, very, very grateful to have you here, Jonathan, and your family. Um, before we go into the roll call, there's going to be a quick announcement. If you notice, the role of Council Member Hiller is being played tonight by Miss Ivory Brown. Miss Ivory Brown won the opportunity to stay here for Councilwoman Hiller and, and be here for the roll call. And she did this on the National Night Out for 2018. So without further ado, we will proceed with the roll call. Council Member Hiller. Here. Council Member Clear. Here. Ortiz. Here. Emerson. Here. Padilla. Here. Jensen. Present. Mays. Here. Cohen. Here. Lesser. Here. Mayor De La Isla. Here. Councilwoman Hiller, would you like to say a few words, or Miss Ivory, would you like to say something to the council? Mm -hmm. Ivory is five years old. She lives in the Ward Mead Neighborhood Improvement Association. She is a first grader at Meadows Elementary, and we're really delighted to have her. Yes, thank you for being with us. I told young Miss Ivory that this is her fast track career to become the President of the United States, because we know that she could make it happen. 
Next item on the agenda is appointments, if the clerk would read. As a board appointment recommending the appointment of Corey Den to the Topeka Planning Commission for a term ending September 30th, 2021. Council, you have the, approve. we have a motion to approve by Council Member Lesser and we have a second by Deputy Mayor Jensen. The mayor does not vote in this instance. If there's no comments or questions, we proceed with the voting. We have nine yes. Nine having voting yes. The motion passes unanimously. Mr. Den, could you please stand so we may recognize you? Thank you. <clears throat> we now move on to the consent agenda, if the clerk would read. A is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout, allowing and approving city expenditures for the period of August 5, 2018 through August 31st, 2018, and enumerating set expenditures therein. B is a resolution introduced by Council Member Karen Hiller, approving a special event known as the Iron Rail Grand Opening and Topeka Brew Festival. C is minutes of the regular meeting of September 11th, 2018, and there is one cereal malt beverage license application before you for Sam's Club, located at 1401 Southwest Wanamaker Road. We have the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of the body? Motion to approve. Deputy Mayor moves to approve. Council Member Cohen makes a second. If there's no comments or questions, we proceed with the vote. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. Next items are the action items. Item A, if the clerk would read. A is approval of a real estate report and method of disposal of real property located at 421 Southwest Huntoon Street. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, tonight, Neighborhood Relations Director Sasha Hahn will uh, discuss the disposal of a piece of property. Good evening, Governing Body Members. Good evening. This evening, as the City Manager mentioned, we have um, a real estate report and a proposal for the disposal of real property in Topeka. Um, the lot depicted there on the aerial is located at 12th and Huntoon, and this would be the southeast corner of that intersection. Um, this property has been deemed uh, surplus, and what that means um, uh, is that none of the city departments have use of this property. We were approached by an adjacent property owner who expressed interest, and I've outlined in the cover sheet for you, for you all the issues with trying to market the lot for just a, a, a marketed real estate transaction. Um, it's not large enough according to the current zoning for any development to occur on it unless it were combined with adjacent pieces of property. So um, again, the, the property was declared surplus, surplus by all of the city de departments. And uh, we have had an appraisal done, which is a, a requirement in order to dispose of property. And we are proposing that we do a private negotiated sale with surrounding property owners. I would be delighted to answer any questions that you have. Do we have any questions for Sasha? Seeing no comments, thank you for your presentation. What is the pleasure of the body? Yes, Deputy Mayor. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second by Council Member Cohen. If there's no comments or questions, we proceed with the vote. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now move on to item B of the clerk would read. A resolution introduced by City Manager Brent Trout authorizing initiation of condemnation proceedings to acquire temporary easements and permanent easements for water line improvement project number T 281104 Northeast Strait from Seward Avenue to the Norwood Booster Pump Station. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Deputy City Manager Gerber will go through this uh, request for imminent domain proceedings. Good morning, buddy. Good evening. Uh, we'll continue the property trend that Sasha started. Only in this case, we're trying to acquire rather than um, get, get rid of property. 
Uh, as many of you know, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of background here because this will be the first of a couple of these proceedings that you're likely to see over the next several months as uh, we obviously have a lot of projects going and uh, occasionally we need to acquire some property for those projects. State law does allow a condemnation by cities for a public purpose. Uh, there's many reasons that you get to this condemnation point when you're dealing with property. Uh, sometimes you have bad titles, sometimes you have uncooperative heirs, sometimes you have uh, dead people without heirs, sometimes you have property owners who uh, are asking 10 times what the property is worth. Uh, we've encountered all of these situations actually. And so um, if you do do a uh, process, if you engage in this process, um, there is a statutory procedure for doing that. Um, and the first of those steps takes place actually in the night is kind of a pre-step. And that is, uh, we're literally asking you to approve a resolution that authorizes the city engineer or a competent engineering staff person to survey the property and see that it is indeed needed for a public purpose. Um, so if you, if you approve the resolution this evening, that would be sort of step one. And then step two, we would come back to you after this survey is done, likely at uh, the October 2nd, I think it's October 2nd meeting. And uh, we would ask you to allow us to file a petition with the district court to further uh, explore the eminent domain process. So again, this evening, we're just simply asking for authorization to pursue survey work so we can identify the parcels which we might need for a public purpose. Glad to stand for questions. So I think I saw Mary Feeney sneak in and she could certainly, as the greatest legal mind in Kansas, she could certainly uh, mm -hmm. enlighten you on any of the legal issues that you might have. I second that comment about Mary Feeney. Does the body have any questions right now? Yes, Deputy uh, Council Member Emerson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Gerber, this is something we don't do very often. Um, and I know you just kind of, uh, you gave a few reasons for it. Is that, is that the case here? You, staff has exhausted uh, about all the efforts to acquire this otherwise? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council Member Emerson, that, in this particular case, that's correct. Uh, we have the two parcels that are identified here, which we'll survey later on, but uh, the identified parcels have uh, deceased property owners and what I would characterize as uncooperative heirs. So. Additional questions? Thank you. Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you. So we've gotten a hold of all the heirs or is, and, and they're wanting more money, is that what you're saying, or don't want to sell or what? Uh, Madam Mayor and Councilwoman Ortiz, uh, in this particular case, one of the heirs just has no interest. I guess it's probably more accurate to call them a disinterested heir. And then the other one, they're not, uh, they're just not simply satisfied with the offer. We had, as recently as last week, we had three parcels and we were able to come to a, an agreement with the third parcel owner, so. And bear in mind, we're looking for, I didn't explain it very clearly, but we're looking for uh, an easement, not right. actually. That was gonna be my next question. Owning the property, right. yes. Right. And to Mr. Henderson, we, we do see these quite a bit because, because of our water lines. Um, so, um, do we have red water over there or do we, why are we replacing the water lines or the water pump? Is it just old and outdated or? Uh, Madam or do you know? And or? Councilwoman Ortiz, I, I can certainly ask a uh, utilities director to come up here, but in general, this is associated with the water line replacement project that we have, okay. which will ultimately connect to the Norwood pump station uh, there in that third and Norwood area and if you recall because the third and Norwood was put in about a year two years ago that's so correct, is this part of the continuance I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out the whole process here yes that, so that that station was recently refurbished and this mm -hmm. is uh, allowing us to make a connection to that line to better serve the area to better serve this yes. area yes ma'am okay. thank you Councilman Emerson Madam Mayor, thank you. I guess, I guess just to clarify my earlier remark, um, we do see these, but how with the, I mean, you guys do hundreds of projects a year and 
and get thousands of parcels of property and easements agreed to. So this is relatively rare given, given the amount of projects we do. I guess, I guess that was my point, that this is something the city doesn't do um, very quickly or very willingly. Madam Mayor and Councilman Emerson, uh, I'm certainly not going to get in the middle of this, <laughs> this debate, uh, except to say that we're very efficient at our work and That's right. uh, we do a nice job. Yeah. <laughs> deputy Mayor. Motion to approve. <laughs> we have a motion to approve by the Deputy Mayor. Do we have a second? We have a second by Councilwoman Clear. Additional comments or questions without the debate? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Sample, is there something that you wanted to share with the group? We saw you sneak in and stand in the corner. I was just going to back up, uh, Mr. Gerber, uh, but it is a, it's a, it's a new water line. It's a 24-inch water line that runs from straight to the, the new Norwood pump station. That will help us pump water from the uh, central zone over to the southeast zone. So that, that new line will run into the suction side of that Norwood pump station. Yes, Councilwoman Ortiz. Okay, so we, we've already got the pump in, so we're just trying to get the lines, better lines, correct? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. And you were, and I wanted to make sure that I understood you correctly. You didn't want to get into it like Mr. Gerber, like between me and Mr. Henderson? <laughs> Absolutely not. You're a smart man. <laughs> Thank you. Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. So, uh, Bob, just to just to confirm, because this is an easement, that means that someone will go in and dig up a pretty big hole and put that line in there, but then it will be covered up, and there'll be some restriction on what can be done over top of it. But it will it'll just look like a the the lot that it is today, more or less, when it's done. Yes, absolutely. When the so it's not taking the land away; it's just using underneath. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. Additional questions of that? Seeing none. Um, we have a motion and a second. We now proceed with the voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We now proceed to an item five, non-action items. Item A of the clerk would read. A is discussion providing an update on the 2017 National Electrical Code. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, tonight, Richard Faulkner, our, division, our Development Services Division Director, will present on the changing of our electrical code to the NFPA 2017 National Electrical Code. Richard. Thank you. Madam Mayor, Council, uh, I'm here tonight to represent the requests from our electrical board that we update our electrical code from the 2011 to the 2017 National Electrical Code. This code is put out by the National Fire Protection Agency. As you're aware, the city uh, has several codes that we use for the protection of our structures and our citizens. And one of these codes is the National Electrical Code. Uh, this particular code covers both residential and commercial structures. Uh, we recognize that we need to try and keep our codes current with things changing. So that's one of the reasons why we're uh, moving forward with the adoption of this code. Uh, if you will recall, we have just adopted the 2015 uh, building code. Uh, the National Electrical Code is on a different three-year cycle, so that's why we're adopting the 2017. It's not on the same uh, three-year cycle as the building code. Uh, as I noted, the code is put out by the uh, Fire National Fire Protection Agency. Uh, the code will help us to make sure that uh, the electricity that is delivered to our citizens and our businesses is delivered in a safe and secure manner. Uh, this request to update the code is coming from the board, Electrical Board of Appeals. Uh, it's the board is made up of, as you can see, engineers and master electricians. Uh, the city, uh, we have uh, our Electrical inspectors are certified uh, 
as electricians and they have been putting on training for the electricians within our community uh, for continuing ed and doing that training sessions they have made them aware that we are moving forward to the 2017 code so all the uh, electricians in the field in the city of Topeka are aware that we are moving to the electrical code uh, we have also engaged uh, the electrical contractors uh, I sent out mass emails to all of the building contractors that I have on my uh, list, sir. Building contractors, plumbing contractors, HVAC contractors. Uh, I sit in on the uh, Small Business Administration's uh, uh, meeting they have every Thursday at Go Topeka. I've informed them about it. I reached out to the uh, Home Builders Association and got some names of some members of their board. Uh, and share with them about the adoption of the 2017 electrical code. Uh, everyone's been very positive about it. They're looking forward to us moving forward and adopting this new code. I didn't have any uh, negative uh, comments. As you can see, uh, of these cities, other cities, uh, we will be the first one to have the 2017 code. Uh, so we're, we're kind of on the lead, lead of the curve here on this particular code. Uh, as I noted, this code is going to address both residential and electrical. Um, the code does residential and commercial because basically light switches, outlets, lights, plugs, those are all basically the same. But the code also goes in a little bit deeper and handles the more uh, heavy duty electricity as well. So that's why the code does both of them. Uh, one of the biggest additions to the, the code that I'd like to share is the arc fault circuit interrupt. Uh, this is a device that will detect arcing of and within a appliance that's plugged into your house. It'll detect arcing in it. And once it detects arcing in that appliance, it doesn't just shut the power off at the outlet, it actually throws the breaker. So that'll help eliminate any possibility of fires breaking out. That's one of the biggest changes that I've seen in the code. They're, it's been in there, they just expanded the use of it. They're requiring them in a lot more places than they did before. So that's one of the biggest changes that I thought was really good. Uh, we're not proposing any uh, local amendments. Uh, we're just taking the code as it's written. Uh, they, the code has made substantial changes uh, from the 2011. Uh, they got, as you can see, five new articles, some five improvements, and the 255 changes. The 255 changes are not changes, changes. Some of it is they've moved some stuff around uh, from one chapter to another chapter. Uh, they deleted some stuff. Uh, they also, there are some new sections, some new wording to clarify some areas of concern in the previous code. So, and the two, when they went from the uh, 2011 to the 2014, it was also about the same amount of changes. So it's just technical stuff and with electricity and things moving quickly, that's why the changes are as they are. And that's all I have. If you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Faulkner. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. So a couple quick questions. Um, why is nobody else using this? Why is nobody? Yeah. That makes good, me very nervous. That's a good question. I, I don't know that we want to be on the bleeding edge of code. And is this going to be less restrictive than the previous code? Or we're trying to get people to build things in the city. And it looks to me like you're adding a whole bunch of expenses to a construction project. And that's also not a good thing. I wouldn't call it uh, more restrictive. Mm -hmm. I'd call it safer. And I don't want to get into semantics, but it's, it's a safer code. Uh, and the home builders, mm -hmm. that's where the cost would really be. Right. And they're supportive of it. I mean, I talked to them about it, and that was one thing that they mentioned. Yeah, but they're also the ones that are making decisions to build in the county because it's cheaper. So um, I'd like some more information on this. I'm, I'm nervous about putting more restrictions. I mean, I, I do understand that, that we need to be as safe as possible, but um, the only safe building is one that's never built. So uh, you know, my concern is that we're not, our community is not growing as fast as we need to. 
and uh, I'm, I'm nervous about changing things when we're trying to encourage people to build things. So I, I appreciate some more information on that if you can. Okay, I'm not following restrictive. Well, so if we're going to add more requirements for people to build something, that's more restrictive. Okay. If we're adding, if, if this is going to clarify things and make it easier, then um, I'm very supportive of that. But often when we change requirements, it's because we're adding things, putting more restrictions on there, more requirements for more equipment, and that adds cost. And that's something our community cannot afford to do. Okay. So I, I appreciate a more detailed look at exactly what the difference is between what we have now and the new code that you're proposing. So would you want to see the changes? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You can do that. Yes. Councilman Lesser. Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, in, in response um, to Deputy Mayor's comments, I, I think that um, I've looked at this in depthly, and as a father of electrician, I understand a little bit more of it than, than probably the average, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But um, the changes aren't more restrictive. The that's change, excellent. The, the changes are, are more in regards to, you know, for instance, I'll, I'll ask you, Richard, where we talk about arc fault circuit, yeah. we're talking about GFIs there, basically. It's similar. It's similar. Yes. And, and basically, it, it's it's not more restrictive. It's more the, the changes in the different, from Alexis to all the different electrical components that are available and out there. It's not adding additional restrictions. It's updating the code versus um the products and the way they've changed the way the building has changed all those all those different different items so um the main reason from what i found is, is where you can either be behind the curve on on getting up to speed and and i was i was critical of you uh, critical in the past on, on the property deal of why we're using 2000 you know seven when it's 2000 and, and now we're ahead of the curve quite frankly and the other comp the other um Cities just aren't up to that because of the cycle they are, and I did get to understand kind of how that works, you know, quite a, a bit more. So, I would not get. I, I think he makes a good point that it, it it's safer because of the changes. It, it's it's not more regulations that's making it more expensive to build. It's just the, the way and the products that have are being used now are different than they had been used five years ago, and certainly ten years ago, and and uh, probably. No different than technology and, mm -hmm. and in your environment, the different softwares do it's the mm -hmm. same type of deal. So I don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say we're not going in here saying, okay, this is more restrictive, it's going to increase, it, it's more. No, I, I agree. I mean, there, 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 there are some changes. There, just so you know, mm -hmm. I have a slideshow that has 200 slides in it that'll show you all, all the changes. I got a code book that's. Mm -hmm. 355 pages to show you all the changes. A couple of the things that I, I want to note, uh, uh, as Councilman Lesser is noting, uh, there, there are little changes like if you're in your kitchen, some people have a little peninsula that comes out and the code was requiring them to put an electrical outlet at the end. Mm -hmm. Now the code is saying you can use the one on the wall. So there are some changes that are going to make it a lot more simpler. Yeah, and, and those are things I think are excellent. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm all for updating it to reflect modern technology. Uh, you know, again, my, yeah, I see you smiling at me. I, I get it. My fear, though, is, you know, we're in competition with builders in the county. And if we're not doing everything we can to encourage people to build in the city, we're going to lose that race. And so as long as this makes it easier, you know, I think that's an excellent point. And we're simplifying the requirements. I'm very supportive of that. But if we're going to come in and say, you know, you used to be able to buy a $10 GFI breaker, and now you need a $250 arc fault preventer, you know, now we've just significantly increased the cost of building a home. And those are my concerns. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilwoman Clear to be followed by Councilman Padilla. Actually, Councilmember Lesser, that's right where I was going to go. And I, I'm thinking eventually everybody's going to be on this. I mean, eventually you're going to, yeah, eventually in, in 2030, they're going to be past this stage. And I don't think asking people to make their homes safer is going to be a detriment. I mean, if, if, if I was building in a house and they said, you know, these are the new codes, I'm thinking, great, I'm going to be safer than I was with the codes in 2005. So 
I think it's great. I agree with Councilmember Lesser. You know, it's like Windows. You, you want XP or you want going to go up here to where this is? And then every eventually everybody's going to go here because this is going to be obsolete. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Councilman Padilla. And I think this question may have been already answered by your response with Councilman Lesser's uh, Deputy Mayor asked why isn't anyone else using this and he explained that there are different cycles so that's one explanation it's not that they wouldn't it's just that they haven't come to that point yet to consider it and that, that's correct and I, I didn't check that uh, my research did show that Manhattan is working on going to the 2017 so while there the other communities don't have it yet you're correct they're they're moving that way so okay. thank you but. councilman emerson and then deputy mayor thank you madam mayor uh, mr faulkner um it appears from reading the ordinance that this takes effect uh, as soon as we approve it and it's published in the newspaper yes uh, can you just talk how that how that impacts projects? I mean, if something's already submitted to you, it's under the old code, and versus, can you please just explain that? Yeah, what, what, what we would do is, if once it's initiated, if there's a project, first we'll, we'll give them 90 days. 90 days is a be a more not a moratorium, but we won't implement it until 90 days, even though it's effective. If plans come in and they're under the 2011, we'll accept those plans and review them under the 2011. Uh, then after that 90 days is up. We still will take it into consideration and, and, and weigh what they're doing to make sure that if, if we can work with them on it, even though it's not under the 2017, if it's an issue that can be worked with, we'll work with them. But we generally give them 90 days uh, to, to, to come up to speed to start submitting 2017. Fantastic. Thank you. Deputy Mayor and then so Councilwoman Hiller. Two quick points. Um, I love that you all bring technology to this conversation. Um, I will respond with saying, uh, with the exception of uh, most likely Mr. Cohen, uh, I would argue that none of you uh, stay up all night to download the newest version of Windows when it's released. You all wait quite some time for it to be, uh, have all the, the bugs and kinks works out. Um, do you know what the uh, code the county uses is? <coughs> They don't have a that let's see, and that's my response to Ms. Clear right there is there is no electrical code out there, so that's what we're competing with. And, and I totally understand everyone's concern for safety. I too share that, um, but there's a balance, and we have to to balance that against people's right to build something and their ability to afford to do so. Thank you, Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Richard. Thank you. You know what was music to my ears, and and uh, the fact that we had some discussions the last time a major code change came through about whether it had been vetted in the construction community, and it did not. And this time, clearly, it has, and uh, I really appreciate that. That was just great to keep it rolling, and I would suggest that um, not only um, when you stay up all night and look at the 200 changes, um, but that those of us who, who want to just test it, it sounds like we could check with just about anybody we know that's either an electrician or a builder and, and double check with them that they felt engaged and that they didn't have any issues. Um, one of the things we're shooting for is excellence in Topeka and to be a place where people want to live and work and play. And, and if, if, in fact, that's just an update, there don't seem to be any big hits or costs, then uh, I, I'm really comfortable with that. I have just one general question for you. Most of what you had on the slide earlier that we're using in new construction is, is part of the International Building Code family. And this one is part of the fire code. Correct. Family. National Fire Protection. Right. And so could you just explain, I mean, and I know that the, the others are, well, both sets are interrelated, but how, how, why this choice and how does it fit with the IBC family? There are, I guess there's two major groups of codes. You have the International Code and you have the Uniform Code and the National Electrical Code is a code by itself. Now the international codes, you have building, plumbing, mechanical, you have all the building and all the, 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 the trades. Mm -hmm. Now the uniform code doesn't have an electrical code. It has building, uniform building, uniform plumbing, uniform mechanical. Okay. So when we use the uniform codes and therefore there is no electrical code in the uniform okay. codes, so we use the national electrical code since there is no uniform electrical code. Thank you. Thank you. 
additional questions from the body? This is not an action item. Thank you very much, Mr. Faulkner, for your presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. Believe it or not, it is 6.34, and we are about to go to <laughs> announcements. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that we go to the clerk for the preliminary agenda. There is one. There, oh, there is. Oh. And then the city manager. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, a few items, a couple of them are carryovers from last time. Um, Encore prize voting continues and goes until September 25th. Um, we are currently in second place in voting, so please pay attention to this. We have good progress made already, so we've got to keep the momentum rolling. Um, Clean State Day is this Friday from 9 to 3, so we're excited about that. It looks like a great, great session this year. Um, on Thursday, September 20th at 6 p.m., the Topeka Zoo and Conservation Center will be hosting an open house to share information about their upcoming construction in Gage Park that will improve the stormwater management and also rearrange the parking around the zoo leading to the construction of Kay's Garden. So if you have an interest in that, it's Thursday, September 20th at 6 p.m. That's all, Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any announcements except for telling the beautiful young lady, Miss Ivory Brown, who was here. Thank you for joining us today in the meeting. It was lovely to have you here. And we hope that you come someday and visit us again. Uh, Councilman Emerson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my only thing tonight, I, I appreciate the uh, city manager talking about the uh, Gen to Gen prize. Again, we're in second place right now. Everyone uh, vote every day, please. Uh, help us help us win that it'd be great i did just want to uh, give a shout out to the water department um, we had a lot of breaks in august I, several hundred i believe and therefore in my district there's about well there was about a hundred holes it seemed like in people's yards uh, driving around over the last week uh, they've been out fixing a lot of those and i know i, I knew one of the guys on one of the crews so i just stopped and asked him and, and when he said city manager's honest he wants us done by october 1st so uh, I really appreciate their efforts. Uh, what they've done so far looks great. So, and thank you, City Manager. Council Member Padilla. Council Deputy Mayor. Just want to remind everybody there's a ton of events <laughs> going on this weekend. So get out there and do something fun in Topeka. Have no update week. on the baby. Hmm? No update on the baby. Um, <coughs> Well, yesterday was the size of a weasel, so now it's the size of a day-old weasel. <laughs> no idea why her app picked that, but that's, that's the report. So. Councilmember Mays. Uh, just to piggyback on that, one of the events uh, going on this weekend is the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, uh, which Karen Hiller and I have both been a part of the committee. And my sister this year is the featured artist, so I would yeah. encourage everybody to go and buy her art. <laughs> it's free to get in, too. So. Councilmember Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. I want to invite you guys over to Oktoberfest. You guys know what that is. It's the big October um, kind of a eating and, and drinking and dancing festival at Grayland Plaza, October 6th. 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and they also have wiener dog races. So I recommend you guys come. That is a lot of fun. Councilmember Lesser. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the only other thing I have is I, which I can't pronounce it. I will be attending, but Aaron, what's it called? The Serengeti Night. Serengeti. <laughs> Serengeti. Serengeti Night at the Zoo the, uh, yes. uh, this weekend as well. So mm. enjoy. Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a quick list besides the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, and I know I will forget something, but TCALC is opening um, through 501 on, uh, on the 20th this week, um, and that's just an incredible building as well as an incredible opportunity for our 501 students. The Jazz and Food Truck Festival is on the 20th. After the Aaron Douglas Art Fair is over, you just pause down and listen to the music. Um, I'm excited to be participating in um, police department training next week in the morning that uh, I think a number of us are. There is a unity picnic that's been organized. It's anybody in town is welcome to come on Saturday afternoon, the 29th of September at Gage Park. It's just an open, easy uh, event just west of the pool. 
the annual, what is now being called the Bike Fest, it was originally Ciclovia, is the weekend of the 29th and 30th. The Glow Ride, which is a huge family event, starts around the Capitol, will be on Saturday night, the 29th, and then the Bike Fest will be during the day on the 30th. I'll be volunteering there, so I'll have my little t I guess I get a t-shirt pad. And then um, the McKinley Burnett statue, Vince, I think that's still on. The McKinley Burnett statue, McKinley Burnett being the NAACP attorney from Topeka on the Brown v. Board case, is being dedicated on Sunday afternoon, the 30th, from 3 to 5 on Kansas Avenue, and Kyla Jade will be singing. So. Councilwoman Clear. Big event Thursday, my birthday. Okay, do not forget that. Um, Freeze ducks. So, now your birthday. I, we did. We sold 58 ducks. Eight over our goal. Yay for us. I don't know. Did you get an email? Anybody get an email you want? No. Why? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Ortiz. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say. Uh, the fire department is gearing up for October month. It's um, Firefighter Prevention Month, and we'll talk about smoke detectors. That makes me happy. Um, also, um, since we're talking about the zoo, when we were leaving Camp Calabunga, I was mentioned to the mayor, we need to really look at our zoo parking lot and refigure that, configure that, because there was a big old space right in the middle um, that we could probably have 20 more spaces there. Um, so I, I, I want to get that on our agenda to to look at that um, if we if we could the zoo is growing and you know sometimes I just park my van out there they think I'm crazy anyway but I just you know because there's there is probably about 20 more spaces we can get in there so if we don't have that in a plan if we can get it it is it is yes ma'am okay. it is it's in the CIP to be done new parking lot area when's when's that what year it's um, under the process with the storm sewer project and the parking lot moves along shortly after that mm -hmm. remember right <coughs> you know exactly it's, it's part of the the new facility that will be open in case garden it's part of that project it's part of that project okay great that's awesome i just i just uh, seen that and, and i think we could really really look at that um i i just a uh, couple one more announcement um you know, when I met Mr. Henderson, I have nothing but love for the man. He came to me and he bought me an article about Hispanics and their culture and, and their food. And then he told me that he was right on target because he grew up with a Mexican family. And he's, he's, he's my Mexican brother, even though he's a little light over there. We call him Antonio. That's the kind of joke we, we kind of joke around. But um, my father passed away several years ago, and it was the end of September. And um, I wanted to do something to honor him. And so what I'm doing is I'm hosting the movie Coco, which Mr. Henderson can come and, and, and get some tips from there and, and, and understand more Absolutely about Absolutely, I'm there. And um, I'm hosting it in, in Santa Fe Park, and it'll be October the 5th in English, or Spanish, and October the 6th in English. Um, and I'd like to invite everybody to come out. Um, we've already got about 500 hits of people that are coming out. It's a great little family movie um, to see and understand the Hispanic culture. So I hope that you will meet Mr. Henderson out there and, yes. and, and to um, answer any questions that he might have about the Day of the Dead <laughs> or anything like that. And, um, but, I, but on a serious note, um, we're, we're gearing up for it. We've got some bikes we're giving away. We're going to be giving away free um, some raffle stuff. We're raffling off some stuff. Uh, not raff, raffle giveaway, um, but I know it's in Sandra Clear's district. It's in her backyard, and I hope to see you and your family there. Um, not stepping on anybody's toes, but that's just a park that I spent a lot of time there. My dad played a lot of ball. And if you're a true Hispanic like Mr. Padilla down there, then you will understand how much time you spent at Santa Fe Park. Um, not only with the games, but then after the games and the beer cake. So it's just kind of something that I wanted to do that's near and dear to my heart and to give back to um, just um, our culture. And with that, I hope to see everybody there. Bring your lawn chairs, bring your blankets. Um, it's going to, uh, movie time is eight o'clock. And we're gonna start right at eight, so we can we can get out of there. But people are excited, and those are some of the things that they want to do. 
and um, I see Mr. Cook out there. We want to have a movie downtown, and we need to just spread it around. Um, different good family movies. Look at he's looking away. He's like, yeah, this costs money. Fry, Fry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. I do, Mr. Fry. You know, cook. Yeah. <laughs> Fry cook. <laughs> You know, I've heard people say, we want to come downtown and have a movie, you know, on Kansas Avenue. So those are just things that people want to do, just fun, fun things. But anyway, I wanted to invite everybody. Um, I hope the mayor will clear her calendar and come out. The mayor will and be there. And I hope um, my brother, Mr. Padilla, as long as, as well as my brother, Antonio, Antonio, I hope that Antonio. they will join us. And I hope the Gerbers will get the Gerberettes out and come, come, and, come and join. So everybody's welcome. And Sandra, thank you for letting me have it in your district. Absolutely. Before we adjourn the meeting, I have the chief as my witness that on Friday, since I was still at home, I had the fire department come over to the house and install the fire alarms that I purchased. Mm -hmm. Chief, as my witness. <laughs> chief, chief. She doesn't sign your check. She doesn't sign your check. <laughs> I thought you'd be happy. How so, many, how how many, many very did sad get? notes? <laughs> <laughs> we now, uh, we have no public, oh yes, uh, Council Member Lesser. I do have one more item if I could address yes, absolutely. it at this point in time. Bill, would you mind coming up? Um, I wanted to, uh, I could have possibly done it back, but it's come up a couple times. Um, <laughs> Um, in regards to uh, Mr. Jensen, Councilman Jensen has brought up about the city code versus the county code in the building that we were just talking about. I want to clarify that because, because Richard misspoke a little bit. The city and the county have the same code. They've adopted the same code. There was a, a group that was set up that collaborated um, between the city and the county to get the codes brought together for, for buildings, for residential. And they are on the exact same codes. Um, the, the only difference is the county did not set up an inspection department. They rely on the, the builders for the inspection. Now, while an inspection would obviously be ideal, there becomes a liability with those builders if they do not build a code where in the past they did not have that liability because there was not such a code. So I just wanted to clarify that because that things came up a couple times about building in the city versus building in the county and the cost. And there's no difference between the cost in, in, in regards to the code. Is there, am I, if, did I summarize that? Yes. Uh, the county uh, basically adopts our code. So when we changed the IBC uh, to 2015 earlier this year, then they take an action at, at a, a subsequent point to update their IBC to 2015. And, and if we adopt the 2017 NEC, they would then follow in some sub subsequent point to do the same. So that they adopted our codes when they adopted their building code um, uh, last year. And that had, been, that had been a concern. And in the past, oh, if you're building the county, well, it's, you know, it, they did solve that. They put a group together, I can't remember. It was about a year, a year and a half ago, I, be, I believe, that they put together to redo that and analyze it and bring it back together to put it on the same part. So I just wanted to clarify that for, for future discussion. Okay, we Thank now you. we now uh, complete our, our items by announcing that there is no public comment tonight. However, we do have the need for a few executive sessions. And um, I think that, so there's not gonna be any action taken. Um, but if the city attorney would read the parameters of the first one. The motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 15 minutes to discuss security measures pertaining to protection of the city's information and communication systems as justified by KSA 7543-19B12. In order to aid the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Deputy City Manager Doug Gerber, Police Chief Bill Cochran, Administrative and Financial Services Director Nikki Lee, Deputy Police Chief Brian Wheelis, Police Legal Counsel Luther Gagne, and myself. No action is anticipated to be taken with open meeting resumes in governing body chambers. Body, we have heard the motion. Is there, a, is there I mean, the, the or the, we have heard the needs for the executive session. Do we have a motion? We have a motion by Councilmember Hiller, seconded by Councilmember Emerson. 
Um, if there's no questions, we proceed with the voting. We have 10 yes. 10 having voting yes, the motion passes. We will now recess uh, to allow individuals to leave the room and so that we can proceed with the session. We have adjourned the first executive session. We do have a need to re-engage in the second executive session. If the city attorney could please read the parameters. The motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 15 minutes for consultation with the city's legal counsel to discuss attorney-client privilege matters as justified by KSA 75-4319B2. In order to aid the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout, Deputy City Manager Doug Gerber, Administrative and Financial Services Director Nikki Lee and myself, no action is anticipated to be taken when the open meeting resumes in the governing body chambers. Body, we have heard what the needs are. I see a motion by Council Member Cohen. Do we have a second by the Deputy Mayor? There's no comments or questions. We could please raise our right hand to express your vote. <laughs> No votes in a position. We now resume our executive session. We have recess, we have, we're, we're done with the executive session. There has been no action taken. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. No. Mm -hmm.